Hey, hey, what is up guys? It is RB in Hardware with a brand new video. Today, I want to show you guys my $450 budget gaming PC that anyone can build in 2021. Now, a cool thing about this computer is that I've specifically picked parts that can easily be upgraded over time. And to game on this PC, you actually don't need a graphics card. The PC has an onboard GPU that is powerful enough to run today's popular games in both full HD and at 720p at low settings. And eventually, when the GPUs do come back in stock, you can easily pop in an RTX 3060 and enjoy silky smooth gaming at ultra settings. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you guys the exact step-by-step -step method how I'm putting this PC build together, showing you guys all the parts I'm using before booting the system up, testing out the gaming performance in some of the most popular games. Now if you follow my steps throughout this video, you should be able to see these numbers in your favorite game with this PC. I will be detailing most of these games in the benchmark section that we're gonna look at after we complete the, the PC build. In case you're wondering what PC parts I'm using, you can easily find all components linked up in the video description. Now before we get into the video, hey my name is Robin and on this channel we benchmark and build gaming PCs using both the latest and used PC parts all to help you decide what parts to pick for your next gaming PC and so if that is something you're interested in smash the like button down below and hit the subscribe button and notification bell. So let's go ahead and start with the base of the build, the CPU, RAM and motherboard. And for today's build I ended up picking the B450DS3H from Gigabyte coming in at around $70 to $80. Based on the B450 chipset, the DS3H is an affordable MATX motherboard that takes all the boxes for an affordable gaming PC in my opinion. Now this includes support for dual channel and for dim slot, we find an M.2 slot, an HDMI output, plus plenty of USB ports. Now the board also has support for Ryzen 5000 and so thanks to fairly good VRMs with decent heatsink, you can easily upgrade to a 4 core or a 6 core Ryzen 5000 later down the road if you want to. And that makes the DS3H the perfect pick for today's budget PC build. Now we're going to pair the B450 with an all-in-one processor, the Ryzen 3 3200G coming in at around $175. This is a 4-core APU with onboard Vega graphics and the onboard Radeon graphics will act as a graphics chip for this gaming PC. The APU is overclockable which means that you can overclock the GPU and expect even more FPS. We're gonna look into this in just a second. It's got a 3.6 GHz base clock and a boost clock of 4 GHz. Let's take a quick look at the gaming performance with the 3200G and here we can see that the $175 processor doesn't disappoint. Now to save a bit of money here guys, we're gonna use the included cooler that comes with our APU. Now since the cooler is using springs, we're gonna have to get rid of the retention frame. We need to look for a golden triangle. And this triangle should be pointing to a corresponding triangle that we find on the motherboard uh, socket. Open up the latch and turn the CPU so these triangles lines up. Then simply drop the CPU in the socket, move the metal arm all the way down and the CPU is installed. Now let's go ahead and install the included stock cooler that comes with the APU. The thermal paste is already pre-applied so all you need to do is to line up the cooler with the AMD logo on the left side. Line up the cooler with the screw holes, then take your screwdriver and secure the screws in a pattern like so. Also guys, don't forget the CPU fan cable. 
This should be connected to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. To light up the system a bit, I am picking the highly popular 16GB Vengeance Pro RGB and these two has a speed of 3200MHz. For optimal performance, we want to put this in slot 2 and 4. So open up these latches, they will only go in one way. And that's it. Now we can go ahead and move the whole base of our build and install it in our case. And for this build, I ended up picking the P360A from Fantex coming in at $70. This is a mid tower case with the front mesh panel that comes with two 120A RGB fans. The case has support for hard drives, SSD, and radiators and long and beefy GPUs. And what I like so much about this case is that it's only $70 and I think you are getting a lot for that. As a bonus, this case has a lot of growth potential, meaning you can throw in a beefy RTX 3060 or let's say a Radeon RX 6700 once GPUs are available in stock again and you can expect great cooling over the GPU. In order to get into the interior, we need to undo these two thumb screws to remove the temper glass side panel. And before we can install the motherboard, we first need to go ahead and install the IO shield. This piece is located inside the motherboard box and it goes in from the back of the case with these circular audio ports located at the bottom. Now we can go ahead and move our whole motherboard assembly if you like and install it. Now we're going to use the screws that comes provided by Fantex and with the board installed before we move on to power supply. Now is a good time to connect the chassis cables that takes care of the front audio and USB as well as the RGB. Let's start with USB 3 and this is what this cable looks like. The connector is located down at the bottom of the motherboard. Moving on to front audio and this cable goes to the left side corner. Next we have the front panel connector and you find this on the lower right side. The A400 is an affordable SSD from Kingston. I am demonstrating on uh, the 240 variant, but to be a bit more future proof, I actually recommend you guys settling for the 481. Now, to install the A400, remove one of the SSD brackets you find on the back side of the case, and we secure it using the included SSD screws. And then we put the bracket back in place. Moving on to the power supply and for today's build I chose the Corsair CV550W unit with 80 plus bronze efficiency certification. Now 550W is a bit overkill for this PC build but the reason why I'm selecting the 550 unit is in case you decide to throw in a graphics card later down the road. A 550W unit is enough to run an RTX 3060 graphics card which would be a great mid-tier 1080p GPU to match with the 4 core budget 3200G. Any GPU above that like the 3070 or the RX 6800 will likely bottleneck the CPU. Anyway, make sure that the fan is facing downwards, then gently slide the PCU into place and secure it. Now we're gonna do a couple of cables and wiring. First up we got the 24 pin power for the motherboard and this one goes to a connector on the mid right side. Next up we got the 8 pin power for our CPU and this one goes all the way up to the top left side corner. Lastly, we have the SATA power connectors and one of these need to go to the uh, RGB hub and the second one is going to the SSD. You also need to connect the SSD to the motherboard and you find the SATA cable in the motherboard box. And what is left to do guys is just to flip the case around, whack on the side panel and we have officially completed our $450 US dollar budget gaming PC build. 
let's fire up some games and let's take a look at what the PC performs like. And on your screen we are looking at the performance numbers I've gathered from today's build and I ended up running 15 games in both 1080 and 720p resolution with graphics details set to low. As can be seen, for the most part at least, you can expect to see 60 FPS on average. But let's have a deeper look at some of the games tested and first up we have Call of Duty Warzone. And here I'm settling for 1080p with everything set to low, with resolution scaling set to 66%. Now without doing any overclocking, you can expect almost 50 FPS on average, but if you download Ryzen Master from AMD's website and using these safe overclocking settings, I was able to squeeze out another 8 to 10 FPS out of the 3200G. And this is guys totally for free, which is insane. I remember guys, you don't have to overclock your system, but it is an option that it's available on the table if you want to. Let's move on to CSGO and for this title I'm going for 1080p with competitive settings. This gives us an average of well over 130 FPS. Whereas in 720p, you're gonna see frame rates around 200 FPS on average. Far Cry New Dawn also runs pretty good, but it is falling a bit behind if we look at the frame rate. And this is a typical example where CPUs like the 3200G, who only have 4 cores, can bottleneck the performance a bit. Now Division 2 is up next and here we see a much healthier numbers, we're looking at almost 50 FPS and 1080p. And if we do a bit of overclocking, you can expect to see almost 60 FPS. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider we saw almost 60 FPS and 720p and about 35 FPS and 1080. Grand Theft Auto 5 runs great on the 3200G with over 70 FPS at 1080p and almost 100 FPS in 1080 and almost 100 FPS in 720p. World War Z is another game that runs fantastic on the 3200G as can be seen with almost 60 FPS in 1080p. Now Fortnite also runs great as you can see and as for the settings I went with a mix between low and competitive settings and so viewing distance is set to 4 and 3D models is set to about 80ish FPS and this results in about 60 FPS on average at 1080p. And if you drop the resolution down to 720p you can expect around 150 FPS. Apex also runs great and if you're willing to settle for 720p, 1080p might also be possible if you do some overclocking. Again, all PC components can be found down below. Great news guys, we now have an official Discord server up and running and if you want to become a part of the community, ask questions either to me or any of the awesome people on the channel, please go ahead and join the Discord server today. Link to the Discord can be found down below. Now watch either of these two videos and I will see you guys in the next video.